Good morning, everyone. My name is Maya Rockymore. I'm president and CEO of the Center for Global Policy Solutions. And welcome to the 2016 Color of Wealth Summit. Each year, the summit convenes hundreds of leading policymakers, business leaders, entrepreneurs, academics, the media, and the public in dialogue not only about the racial wealth gap, but about solutions to close that gap. Because we know to close the gap and create more equitable outcomes for marginalized populations is to strengthen our communities, the nation, and the world. Today wouldn't be possible without the strong support of the Ford Foundation, Prudential, J.P. Morgan Chase, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. So we'd like to extend a very strong thank you to each of those organizations. I'd also like to extend a thank you to the co-director of the Closing the Racial Wealth Gap Initiative, uh, the Insight Center for Economic and Community Development, uh, presided over by Henry Ramos and represented here today by Ann Price. Our theme for this year is the inclusion revolution, race, economic mobility, and the future of America. In cities and towns across America, the United States of America, the richest nation on earth, America, continues to experience deep racial, ethnic, and class disparities in health, education, and economic well-being. From Baltimore to Detroit and Flint to Ferguson and places in rural areas in between, the basic needs of entire groups of similarly situated people, often bound together within a segregated or isolated geographical location, go unmet. Meanwhile, officials responsible for addressing concerns are either overwhelmed, underprepared, or worse, unconcerned, complicit in maintaining a system that works best for too few and leaves too many without the resources and opportunity that makes a better life possible. Thanks to groundbreaking research from Raj Chetty and others, we now have quantifiable evidence that where you live, the city, the neighborhood, and even the block, has a profound impact on the opportunities you get in life. Each year a child spends in a poor neighborhood decreases her chances of going to college, increases her chances of becoming a single parent, and decreases her expected earnings as adults. Unfortunately, the number of Americans living in high poverty neighborhoods, places often cut off from decent jobs, schools, and other opportunities has nearly doubled since 2000. The problem has hit communities of color particularly hard. More than one in four poor African Americans and nearly one in six poor Latinos live in high poverty neighborhoods compared to just one in 13 poor whites. With the racial and ethnic makeup of the nation dramatically shifting, it is imperative that we address the dilemma of demography even as we address the dilemma of disinvestment. How do we develop a vibrant economy with the dramatic growth of the nation's most economically vulnerable households? Later today, we'll hear from and engage with leading thinkers and doers on three foundational elements for developing a more inclusive, diverse, and dynamic society. Banking on business to close the racial wealth gap, strengthening entrepreneurship in communities of color, financial inclusion, access, and opportunity. It's an interactive panel that will focus on bringing vulnerable populations into the fin financial mainstream. And equity-centered development, inclusive strategies for building and improving low-income communities. Data show that entrepreneurship can be a path by which people of color can generate wealth and close the gap. But we need systems in place that encourage entrepreneurship and boost the success of minority-owned firms. One major impediment to people of color looking to start and grow their own firms 
is a lack of family wealth. Most entrepreneurs use family wealth, especially home equity, as initial capital. I did. But people of color as a whole have very little wealth to begin with. So we need policies that help both entrepreneurs who are just starting a business and those who want to grow. Our report, The Color of Entrepreneurship, Why the Racial Gap Among Firms Cost the U.S. Billions, authored by Algernon Austin, who's here, and was, which was released yesterday, tells us that closing the racial gap in business ownership would add 9 million jobs, 300 billion in worker income, and 1 million new businesses to the U.S. economy. Clearly, supporting entrepreneurship is a critical strategy for closing the racial wealth gap. So, too, is increasing financial inclusion, which, as the Department of Treasury notes, and I quote, enhances the ability to smooth consumption, manage life's risks, and takes advantage of economic opportunities, such as starting or growing a small business, and has a direct bearing on national economic growth rates, and is interrelated to the issues of financial stability, integrity, and protection. Speaking of stability, integrity, and protection is the issue of gentrification, a phenomenon we know too well here in Washington, D.C., and communities across the country through which longtime residents are priced out of neighborhoods in which they've lived often for generations, is it possible to revitalize without gentrifying? Is it possible to revitalize and allow the people to live there to enjoy the benefits of a revitalized community? Is it, is it possible to revitalize while being inclusive of the populations that exist? We'll explore related challenges and opportunities to develop more diverse and inclusive communities. At the end of the day, that's what we're all focused here today for. And many of us who work in this work on a daily basis in life in general, the issue is about inclusion. So, I mean, this is why our theme today is the inclusion revolution which places the value of diversity and inclusion at the center of our democracy and seeks to reinforce it through the economic, political, cultural, and social systems that shape our nation. Now, I, I must say this, that the inclusion revolution is imperative at this moment in time. I think that the national culture and the dialogue and the discourse uh, certainly over the last eight years, but particularly within the last 12 months, has uh, basically declined precipitously. Uh, the issues of diversity and inclusion, whether we're talking about race, uh, religion, uh, ethnicity, uh, country of origin status, uh, all of these issues that are important and that are inherent in the fiber and the makeup of this nation, I think has uh, taken a hit in terms of the national dialogue and discourse. And so we must be about the business of strengthening the, the notion that it is vitally important that in order to maintain the ideals of the United States of America, the, demo, the, the democratic ideals, uh, that we absolutely must embrace our diversity. And so we're asking everyone here uh, today to check out our Inclusion Revolution Declaration available at www.theinclusionrevolution.us. Americans of all backgrounds deserve to live in a country where they are secure in their constitutional right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We also deserve leaders who truly believe that these fundamental rights are universal, not just for the privileged few, but universal. Any candidate worthy of holding public office in the United States of America should be willing to demonstrate his or her commitment to fairly representing all people by endorsing our inclusion revolution. And we're gearing up for a national campaign to build support for it. So pay attention. You'll be hearing from us soon. 
Closing the racial wealth gap absolutely means building wealth for all so that we all can contribute to driving the U.S. economic engine into the future of the world. It means creating a more inclusive economy and society. Doing so, however, will require participation from everyone. There is no sitting on the sidelines in this campaign for the future of America. There is absolutely a role for every single one of us. It will require a multi-sector, multi-level action, collective action, including cooperation with companies, nonprofits, federal, state, and local governments, activists, and advocates working together, knowing America's diversity is our promise, not our problem, problem, and moreover, the basis for our strength and prosperity. Thank you. Now, I'd just like to share with you that anybody who has been with us before knows that the nature of Congress means that you are always flexible to work within the schedules of the Congress members. And they may be doing any host of things, from meeting with constituents to voting on the floor. They'll be coming in and out uh, throughout the day. Uh, and that means sometimes what we've had to do in the past is make sure that our scheduling is flexible. We have actually stop panels in the middle of the session to allow members to speak, and then we continue the panels later. Uh, we've actually also delayed uh, panels in the start uh, in order to wait for the policymakers who are expected to appear. Now, we are actually in that situation this morning. <laughs> and so, we're going to slightly delay uh, the beginning of the first panel, waiting for uh, the policymakers to arrive. Uh, is, Lily, is Lillian Estes here? Lillian, could you come up on stage? Mm -hmm. What about Michael? Is Michael here from Pennsylvania? Okay, not yet. Michael is? Okay, send him in. <laughs> 